Yes, we're testing that. Uh, it's unbelievable that uh, a year ago or two years ago, we were, you know, fighting for which one was better between the poly and the mono. And uh, suddenly uh, the discussion moved on, uh, which uh, has the bigger <laughs> cell probably. <laughs> oh, so there was no clear winner in the end on that one? Or? <laughs> well, no. you know. It's like, all about it, size. Yeah. It's like a religious <laughs> argument <laughs> really, isn't it? I mean, it's, yeah, there's no uh, yeah, mono poly. Yeah. Um, same with the cell size is the, is the new religious argument though isn't it? Uh, absolutely I think that uh, the R&D is driving down the cost of mono a lot in a way that you know that became more and more compatible in terms of cost of the poly and the, and the mono and also Canadian solar is uh, is also investing a lot more in uh, mono technology at the moment did we um we I mean we're relatively technology agnostic. We we still produce poly and we will continue. Yeah. We you know, Sean Q, our founder, who's a material scientist, believe that the development side of, of uh poly still has a long way to run. So there's there's a lot more efficiency that, that can be gained there. And we'll I mean, if we look at you know, certainly in the utility space of the projects, not just here in Australia, but globally, the vast majority of those, if not all of the recent ones I'm thinking of the last couple of years have all been poly and that's just simply comes down to LCOE. It, it, it works out better. Yeah, correct. It works out more yeah. cost effective in yeah. the returns for investors. So, um, yeah, don't write off poly. It's been done before. It'll be done again, but it, it's still with us and no, it's still with us for a long time. So, yeah. Can I ask a question coming back to the bifacial? So was this developed as a bifacial cell? Uh, mm. This specific, I'm not sure, but uh, but the, now all the cells coming from the manufacturing sites are bifacial cells. No matter whether they are going into a bifacial module or in a monofacial module. So the monofacial modules, um, that known as a perk, they got a kind, of, let's say, simple and simplistically, they got a kind of a reflective uh, back sheet. So when the the light is the light hits the the, the cell. Some of the lights is bounced, some of the lights is converted into energy, and some of the lights is going through the cell, and then is bouncing on, on the back sheet and is hitting the, the back side of the cell, which is bifacial, and is increasing the, produ- the production. So probably, but this is for monofacial. So for monofacial, for the bifacial instead, the light is going through or the, 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 bi- the, the back side of the module is collecting the light coming reflected from the ground, from the trees, from the clouds, from the environment that is uh, surrounding the modules, as well as the same light that is going through and bouncing back. Okay, so it's basically the same, except you either have a back sheet or you don't have a back sheet. Correct. It's the same. Okay. Yeah. And um, Glenn, we were talking about this earlier today, I think, where, uh, so as a racking manufacturer, this came up, maybe 18 months ago with another panel manufacturer where they were, we were looking at uh, designing um, rails. So, you know, the rails normally run along the back yeah. of the of the panels. Uh, and also we have a landscape rail, which means it runs along you know, the, the frames or the top and the bottom. And and that particular panel manufacturer showed me some uh, test results that they'd come up with where it looked like the difference between having the rails running directly behind the the cells or you know having a landscape rail and, and being completely out of the way was was pretty small as far as the output goes that was their results on their uh testing has canadian done any um any equivalent sort of testing or looked at that as, as something that um yes uh, mm, uh, we do a lot of research in that space of course we are recommending uh of course, we uh, most of our research is done in the utility space, of course, yeah. because uh, it's we it's difficult to implement a bifacial uh, um, s- system on your roof. But uh, of course, we are providing some recommendation, and uh, and uh, the the racking or the tracker manufacturer are uh, spacing out the torque tube. So at least it needs to be at least 100 millimeters away from the backside of the module okay. in a way that doesn't affect too much I see. Uh, the, the cells in the middle, as well as the, 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 the clamping and the, and the rails that need to be on, on, the, on the 
Uh, so they don't, they, we have to avoid to have rail in there running across the module. Okay. But also, if you see the frame of the, mo the bifacial module, it, uh, it's a little bit different. It's got uh, the flap uh, shorter to avoid also uh, sh shading. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, is it still framed or? It's still framed. It is still because framed. Because okay. the module is getting so big that without, once upon a time, probably two years ago, we had a frameless solution. But now with the module going like 2.2 meter long or 2.4 meter long, you can't uh, have without frame. Mm. Check out more episodes from Combos with Glenergy. Slap that subscribe button now. Cheers, cutters.